Hey there, and welcome to my channel. My name's Crafty Kathy. I'm the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I'm so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. Guys, last week I came up with that planter video where I was like incorporating some of the new spring IOD collection in there. And the way that I came up with that is the days are getting warmer. They seem to be getting longer. It's my favorite time of year. And then I walk out to my craft room and I have to pass my garden area, my patio, the pool area. And I'm just gonna be honest with y'all, it looks like tornado meets, I'm just gonna say it, okay? Don't get mad, okay? I don't mean nothing by this, but white trash mixed in with hillbilly mixed in with junkyard a little bit of everything there and like i said don't get mad at me for saying that now i'm from tennessee okay and i'm gonna get a comment i know that says not everybody from tennessee is hillbillies i know but i am okay so i'm just gonna be honest all right now that's what my place looks like i ain't saying that's what your place looks like but if you're like me and you stay in more during the winter, it probably does have a little sprinkle of a few of those elements in there. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, y'all really liked that video according to the analytics. So I came up with another one. And to be honest with you, this one's better. I like this one better. I like the projects that I came up with better. I used my imagination on the first one, but I just like this one better, and I hope you do too. Now, I'm going to throw out there, this is a thrift flip video. So, even if you have no intentions of buying any of that IOD spring collection, and you might not, um, then that's fine. But I really would love for you to stick around too, because some of the techniques that I use in this video, if you like that look, you're going to learn some techniques where you can do it yourself at your own you know garden or patio or whatever so enough of all that blabbing and like i said please don't take offense to me saying that it's just i probably have a limited vocabulary at times and especially like if i'm in a hurry to put a video out and that's the first thing that comes to my mind and i'm so sorry and i don't mean anything by that like i said i joke about it all the time because hello half of my family fits into that category all right so we're just trying to spruce up our outdoor area and I am so excited. But anyways, enough of all that. Let's get into the video. The first planner that we're going to start off with is one that I found at the thrift store. I only paid $2.99 for it. And it was still brand new. It still had a tag on it that said Southeastern Salvage. Um, that's a place here in Tennessee. I'm not sure if it's around the country, but it's like discount things, usually that you build like home building materials. It's like a discount Lowe's. But I used my drill bit. I made a bunch of holes in the bottom of it so that I could put my real flowers in there. And when I started off on this video, I wanted to put all real flowers in these planters and show them to you, but time did not permit so what we're going to start off doing is using this beautiful inlay that Miss Lori over at Milton's Daughter sent me. This is called Petite Fleur, and it's in red. They come in red, or you can get pink. Now, my idea was to use one of these little squares. And the way that I did it is I just cut that square out and cut the piece out in the middle. Now, to make it easier on myself, I cut these right in the very center. There was actually a little spot that didn't have anything there. And I'm just kind of looking at it to see what it's going to look like and where I can put it at. Now, just remember, the way that these things come, these inlays, transfers, any of it, you don't have to use it exactly the way they show. You can use bits and pieces of it to make it what you want. Now, if you don't set an inlay with paint, you can set it with Big Top, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start off just doing the top piece. I do my Big Top up there, and then it says to spritz your inlay. Always remember to lay the inlay on the side down where the paint is. And don't worry, it's very easy for you to determine which side is the side that has the paint. It's the one that is more bright and colorful. 
I'm going to do it just like I do my decoupage and just kind of get out any kind of wrinkles, air bubbles, whatever. And then you're just going to mist, mist, <laughs> mist it again. <laughs> and then I'm just using a baby wipe to wipe off any of the excess drippage because we don't want it just pouring wet. And look at this nifty brayer that Miss Lori sent me. It's an IOD brayer. I've always wanted one and I'm so thankful she sent it. And I'm not sure what was up with my bottle here, but it wasn't misting very good. That's why it just kind of drenched my paper. If something like that happens, don't fret, don't flip out. Just get a baby wipe and kind of dab it to get off that extra drippage. It's not gonna hurt it any way whatsoever. I'm doing the same thing on this bottom portion. I'm just putting my big top down and then I'm gonna spritz my paper and I'm just going to place it down just like I did the other piece. And since I'm working with such small pieces here, it was very easy to place it down and there was absolutely no wrinkles. Even, you know, though that this flower pot has a, like a pot belly design, you know, where the belly of it kind of comes out, but it wasn't hard to do at all. I'm going to repeat those steps. I'm just going to get all the wrinkles out, mist it again, and then use a baby wipe to make sure that there's not any like major runs or the water running down or anything. And while this is drying, it just takes a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and go over the rest of my surface with the big top because number one, it's going to seal it, but number two, it's going to make it all look the same. Now, once your inlay is absolutely dry, and you know when it's dry because you can tell just by looking at it, it looks like faded looking, you know. You just mist it again, get it good and wet, and I like to just kind of peel away just a very, like an edge. That way I can see if it's taken, make sure that it's taken, and look how beautiful it is. So you just very slowly peel it off, lay it down where the paint part is like up in the air so you're not putting that on your table. I'm going to do that to the exact same bottom part. You know, I've had this flower pot for a couple of summers, but I just didn't know what to do with it because I liked that little piece that it had on the front, but I just didn't think that it was given enough, you know. But now that I've got this inlay, I popped it right on there and it looks like it always belonged on there. Well, I like the way that that looks so much. I decided to go ahead and put these rose patterns one on each side of this in the front. And I kind of cut it down. You don't have to cut it down this small by any means at all. I just like to do it because, well, I'm used to decoupaging and that's what's just in my mind to do. But it also seems like it's easier for me to grab it and pull it off. You could use this beautiful vine design that I'm showing here, but I decided to use these two rosebuds. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to put a little bit of that big top down, and you don't have to go crazy with it. You don't have to get it soaking wet. I misted my little inlay, figure out exactly how I want it to lay. And like I said, you lay it down with that paint side down. A lot of people are just aren't thinking when they do that. And they're like, whoops. And I was afraid that my big top had already dried a little bit because it does really dry very quickly because it takes less time for the big top to dry than it does like, you know, the paint. And by the way, if you want to try out any of these inlays, any of the products that you're seeing me use on this channel today, I got them from Miss Lori over at www.miltonsdaughter.com. Miss Lori is amazing and let her know that Crafty Kathy sent you. And if you don't know exactly what the pieces are called, don't worry. You can tell Miss Lori and she knows exactly what they are. And she is amazing in customer service. So here I did the same thing. I just laid my inlay down with the paint side down. I misted it. I kind of dabbed it up with the baby wipe, and I'm very quickly going to do that same thing on the other side. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, I would love it if you would give me a big thumbs up. That's the like button. Also, leave me a comment, guys. I love to talk, as y'all know, and I would love to meet you in the comment section. 
And if you don't want to leave a comment, you can even just leave an emoji like a heart or something. All these things tremendously help out the growth of my channel. Also, on my analytics, it shows that only 50% that watch my videos are subscribed. I'm not sure what's holding you back, but I would love for you to subscribe and become a part of our family. If you would do those few little things for me, I would greatly appreciate it more than you ever know. Now here, all I'm going to do is just like I had done before when I took the inlay off. When it dries, I just misted it down. And then I'm going to use that baby wipe, pat it again, and then just peel it up. And just in case you were wondering what I was doing, why I wet the right side first and then moved over to the left side is because I noticed on the right side, the very end part of it didn't seem to have taken all the way yet. So I wanted to give it just a few more seconds. I just kind of wet it back again and then pushed it in with that baby wipe. And second time is a charm because it definitely came out gorgeous. Now, once your inlay is totally dry, you let, you know, where you dabbed it with that baby wipe, just give it a few seconds to dry. You need to seal it. Now, this is where I got scared, to be honest with you, when I first started doing these, because I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to activate the paint again when I put the big top on it and make it run. But if you do it very lightly, very carefully, it's no problem. Or you can use that Rust-Oleum Matte Clear and just spray it. It's a sealer also. Now, I got these little birds off of Amazon last year, I think. They're still in my Amazon store if you want some, but I thought he was going to be so cute to stick him up on the top because you guys know me. I don't know when to stop. So, I put him up there and I put a little bit of glue, but I also put some wood glue on there so he would hold really good. I pulled out my dark and decrepit. It's a liquid patina and it is a beautiful brown color. So what I did was just take this tiny little detailed brush and I painted it on my bird and I left it alone for just a few minutes so it could start drying on there. And then after it dried, I just kind of dabbed it off to my liking. I hope you like this first one. The second DIY is by far my most favorite one of this video. Now, this is a piece that my husband got me a couple of years ago. He literally stopped on some people's property up in Spring City, Tennessee, and saw this amongst other stuff on their front porch. And he walked up to their house and told them, hey, my wife is a crafter and the whole nine yards, I'm sure. But... Anyways, he got this piece for $25, and he came bringing it home like it was the jewel of the Nile, honey. It already has this beautiful rust on it, and I was pointing out that beautiful patina, that, that bluish-green patina. Now, it's a scale, as you can see, and it's got two little plates. I'm not crazy about those plates, but I hope you like what I do with this piece. Now, I don't know if this is a statue of a boy or a girl, but I do know that I cannot stand those earring, dangly-looking pieces or whatever those things are that they used to put on pieces. I don't like them. And I'm pointing down here because I'm needing to cover up that white piece. It's actually like white marble. I don't want to paint over that. I took it outside, and I gave it a few coats of my Rust-Oleum two times in matte black. I find it best and easiest to spray paint stuff when it has all these little nooks and crannies so that you don't miss anything. Now, she or slash he came out gorgeous. Look at this piece, how pretty just a little bit of spray paint made it. Now, I'm going to have to hold it sideways because this piece is very tall. It's about two and a half foot tall. 
And I'm going to use this piece that I made from a mold called Conservatory Labels. It's one of the new IOD pieces that I got from Miss Lori. And I told y'all that I'm going to be labeling everything since that's my favorite piece out of the whole IOD Spring Collection. I know I said it was going to be those stamps, but it's actually turning out to be the labels. I mean, the stamps have labels in them, too, that's like label stamps, but there's just something about the molds that I like and the 3D effect that it gives. So anyways, I'm just putting a little bit of my tight bond quick and thick and just a little hair of hot glue on the back of it, and I decided to put it kind of up toward the top right in the middle of those scales. And by the way, these scales don't like rock back from side to side. I really wish they did because that would be a cool effect, but they don't. So I just put it up there and had to leave it alone and let it dry. When it dried, I took it outside and I spray painted it also, just the little label part because I had to add that on later. I'm going to use this beautiful wax paste. It's a Pentart product, and guess what? I got it from Miss Lori over at Milton's Daughter, and I have been using the tarnation out of this stuff. I love it. I love the effect it gives. Y'all, I thought that I was liking the gold, but in my mind lately, it can't compare to the bronze. I love a black statue with beautiful bronze on it. And look how easy this is to do. All you do is just put a little bit of it on your finger and rub your finger over any surface where you may want it to have like a little touch of bronze. And you can put as much or as little as you want. It's all up to you and your liking. You may not even like it at all, but I think it's gorgeous. See all that detail that it pulls out? And I do feel that, I, you know, I've been using this wax paste the last few videos. And I do have to say, it feels the same to me as Rub and Buff. It's just a lot cheaper. Rub and Buff is about half, wait, okay, this is half as expensive as Rub and Buff. The little jars are only $8 over at Milton's Daughter. And one of those little jars will last you for the longest time. And I'm just going through all the little areas here. Never mind the fact that I've got spray paint on my fingers. That's what that is, by the way. And I'm just going through all these little divots and rubbing that beautiful bronze all over it. And I'm just taking my time because I'm enjoying that process. Now here, where there's all this detail, I really wanted to put a lot, and it was just like running my finger down a little slide, like, wee, and it just, oh, I just absolutely fell in love with this stuff. I, you guys are probably going to see me use it a whole lot, you know. I really put a lot of it in his slash her hair, and let me know if y'all think this is a girl or a boy. I can't figure out. It just looks like a little cherub to me, so I'm not sure, but I wanted a lot of it on the sash. I wanted a lot of it on the hair, and then there's areas like the little toes, and look, I even put it on its little bum bum. I wanted to make sure that I accentuated those baby cheeks. And uh, so then later, I kind of went back and put a little bit of black over that because I thought, my goodness, what was I thinking? But anyways, I really, really like the way that this turned out. I didn't go crazy on the body part of it itself because I wanted all that detail to shine, not necessarily parts that didn't have all the little divots in it, you know. So you see, it's very easy, and I was trying to keep it in frame in the camera because it was such a big piece. I was trying my best to keep it so you could see exactly what I was doing kind of up close and personal and just see how beautiful this is. Isn't it gorgeous? So anyways, I just went around the whole statue, front and the back, the sides, every little bit. Oh my goodness. I'm loving this piece. Okay, I like this piece exactly the way it is, but I decided to show it to you in two different variations because this came to my mind after the fact. Okay, 
what I did was I pulled together, this is just a little 25 cent riser that I got from the thrift store. Then this other piece is where I, I got this at Goodwill for like a buck 99. It's been sitting in my stash for years, okay? I took those outside, spray painted them, and then along the way, I ended up not using that smaller riser because I thought, what is the point of just barely rising it? I wanted it to come up just a little bit more than what that could give. So, long story short, a little disaster happened, and you'll see that here in just a minute. But I found a bigger, like, candlestick, and that's what I used. Now, while those pieces were outside drying from the spray paint, I went ahead and used the apothecary label stamps, and I did the word vintage. I have found that if you put the word vintage on everything or anything, people are going to assume that it's vintage. Now, mind you, this is a very old piece, and it probably is a vintage piece, and I told you I'm going to be labeling everything, okay? So, we are not going to put that label on the top without putting something up there. And I was either going to put like a date up there, but I settled on the word vintage. And since I had painted it black, I did it with my white permanent ink. And I like the way it looks. And of course, I couldn't leave that part without going over it with my little bronzing wax. But as sure as I'm standing here right now, some hillbilly's going to come to my house or be swimming this summer, and they're going to go, Hey, Kathy, ain't that uh, piece right there, ain't that vintage? That piece is vintage, ain't it? I'm just telling y'all, I can see it coming already, honey. I don't know if y'all can tell or not, but I have had way too much caffeine today. I'm just popping off the walls. Uh, you can really tell a difference because I don't drink a lot of caffeine at all. Well, I drink tea like it's going out of style. That's about all I do drink. But um, in my neck of the woods, we don't count that as caffeine. I'm talking about coffee. And I might have a cup of coffee every once in a while, and you can really tell when I do. By the way, this is that long candlestick that I told you that I ended up um, I ended up chucking that smaller riser because I wanted it to be higher up. And this is the piece that I found by a straight up disaster in here in a little bit. And yeah, like I said, you get to see that part. But here I'm just showing you where I went around and I'm putting that bronzing wax on this part too. I didn't commit to actually putting it together because I want to be able to show y'all both ways. I wanted to be able to show you what this piece looks like when it's just the statue by itself. And then when I have it, um, you know, on the riser and on this piece here. And that way you can tell me what you think looks best. My personal opinion is that it looks best when it has this extra riser on it. Because it takes it from about two foot tall to a total of about three foot tall. And it's just going to be gorgeous out by the swimming pool this summer. But let me know what you think about this one. I'm really in love with it. And here she is without the riser. Tell me what you think. The third DIY is one of the easiest ones and it's my second favorite one. <laughs> this is an old 
a flour sifter. I got this while I was on vacation last year in Destin at a antique booth or like an antique mall. I think I paid five bucks for it and it's been sitting here in my room forever. But I thought how beautiful that would be to turn it into a planter because it's got the little wire mesh that you sift the, the flour through and I could put something down where that would hold the dirt and it would still be a good drainage. So why not let's go with what we started off with, with this petite floor in this red color because I kind of wanted to keep everything looking very similar because I'm going to be putting all this out by my pool and on my patio out there. I'm going to be using Big Top just like I did the first time. And this one is so fast and easy. If you blink, you're going to miss it. I'm just putting a little bit of the Big Top down and you see I'm slopping it everywhere. I didn't mean to, but I kind of did anyway. And then I'm going to wet my little piece again. I'm going to lay it down with the paint facing the actual product itself. And then I'm going to just kind of use my fingers, make sure there's no wrinkles in it. Now, it does have little lines. The sifter does have lines in it, but that's fine because we want those in there. We want it to go again. We want it to go with whatever shape, you know, the piece has. So here I'm just taking the baby wipe and wiping off the excess water because we don't want it drippy and running. And I also really push it in good when I'm doing that baby wipe method because that way we know that it's definitely going to be getting a good adhesion. Now I'm going to leave it alone and let it dry. After it's dry, all you do is mist it again and then use that baby wipe so you don't have any runny water and you peel it up. And when I first started peeling it up, remember I only do a small portion, I thought, ooh, I better give that piece just another second. But then I realized, you know what? This is rust. I don't know what, what how this paint is gonna take to rust or what it's gonna look like. And so I thought, let's just go with it because sometimes when things look old and like are not perfect, that's when they are perfect. And this is the Mac Clear sealer that I'm always talking about. If you're too afraid to run your big top over the top of it, just spray it. This is our last DIY of the day. And good thing because my caffeine is starting to run out by now. This is just one of those cheap little planters from Dollar Tree. You don't have to spend a bunch of money to have some beautiful planters, guys. But I do find that the credit has to go with these IOD pieces because that's what makes these so gorgeous, the pieces that I've been using. Now, I'm going to take this planter and get it situated where we can put some beautiful molds on it. Molds makes everything beautiful. And these are molds that I had already made previously. I've just been holding out on them for a rainy day. Now, this particular mold is Last Spring's collection, and this mold is called Hidden Hollow. Remember, it had all the different little doors, and these look amazing on planters. I was going to use that, um, the smaller one, and then I thought, no, the bigger one, and I was kind of going back and forth. And here, I'm not really doing any kind of technique that you haven't seen before. Once I decided on what mold, and or let's just say molds, because I used several molds, once I decided on which ones that I wanted to use, we just got to get them on the planter. Now, these molds, like I said, I made them a while back ago. You always have to hit them with a very hot glue, a uh, hot glue gun. Goodness, Kathy, I told you caffeine ain't working no more. I had to hit it with my dryer there so that I could get it pliable enough to bend. I wanted to bend it to the shape of this beautiful planter, okay? So I put out some of my tight bond quick and thick and I went mostly down the middle there. I want to get a good stick. I put a little bit of hot glue in the places where I didn't have the tight bond quick and thick 
and I just placed this down. Now, when I got it down, it was still wasn't molding exactly to the little planter like I wanted it to. It's best right when you make these molds to go ahead and put them on whatever you're going to, if you're going to use them on something that's curved, because they will fit to that curve perfectly, but you need to do it right when you make them, unless you use clay mold. So I'm going through using different ones. These are the pieces that came from the one that had all the different little mushrooms on it, and it was last spring's also. There was mushrooms and then that little frond, they call it. This little bug that I'm using now is from the specimens that just came out this, this spring. And then the little snail here, it's from Dewdrop Pond. Those are all spring last year's except for the bug. Now, I'm really excited about using this bug when Halloween comes around. I have an amazing DIY planned where I'm going to use the specimens mold for Halloween. So, I'm going around here and I really wound it up and tried to get that uh, those molds to hold. And I left it alone overnight and I let it dry. Now, I was real messy with the glue here. So, I just had to go through. This is the next day. And I took off my tape and I just kind of flipped off the little pieces of glue and wiped them off. I grabbed this green vase. It's from a previous DIY and it was just sitting there not being used. So I thought I wanted to lift up my planter a little bit. And I thought, what a smart idea to put some sand or something heavy down in this vase so that it will not topple over when the wind blows. Because I plan to put this outside. So I put some of this red Dollar Tree sand in there and then I put my top bond uh, quick and thick on the top and then also a little bit of the hot glue. And I went ahead and put these two pieces together. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do once I got them together was take them outside and hit it with that black matte Rust-Oleum two time spray paint. I know I'm doing a lot of black, but that's just the color that I personally am going for around my pool this year. Look at these beautiful wax paste that Lori sent. She didn't just send the bronze. She sent this color called chameleon. It's, it's like pearl, a blue, a green, a gold, and the bronze. Now, of course, the bronze is my favorite, but I thought, why don't we try out this green and just give it a whirl? If I don't like it, I can always paint over it. So, that's what we're going to start playing with here. I just did the exact same thing like I do with the bronzing kind. You just get a little bit on your fingertip. And I started off very, very little because I didn't know what it was going to look like. And I didn't want to ruin my piece. But I really loved the way the green looked. Especially when I just put like a little bit on this black. Because the impression that I got... It almost looked like an old hollow door, you know, in a hollow somewhere. And it's going to be rusty, but it's got that old green moss growing on it. And I thought, wow, I really like this green. And then whenever I got over to this little leaf or this frond, whatever you want to call it, I really hit it with the green because I wanted it to stick out. It doesn't even do it justice when you see it on camera like this because it's so metallic-y and so green. It is just gorgeous. So I just kind of went around this whole piece putting very little on most of the things. I didn't want to go crazy with the green because I wanted to blend it in and make it look like it was some type of like moss growing on the stuff. And then this is where the disaster happened. I wasn't paying attention to how much pressure I was pushing on that top planter, and of course it wasn't all the way dry yet, and I just let sand fly all over the place. And you see, the first thing I do is I didn't react out of anger. I just sat there tapping my fingernails like, okay, now what? But I'm actually thankful that that happened because I was able to find this tall riser piece that I used on my little scale that I showed you two DIYs 
back ago. <laughs> and then this is simply the top to a candle that is, came from the Dollar General. And what I did was glued it on the very top so that sand wouldn't go flying out again. And all's, in, all's well that ends well. I glued it down and went ahead and started doing the bottom portion of that vase. Now, on the bottom portion, I didn't want a whole bunch of the green. Like I said before, I just wanted it to kind of look like a, like a moss growing on it, like an afterthought. I went around, and in some places I put a little more, some places I put a little less, just however I wanted it to go, you know. Just do it to your own liking. And then after that, I went behind everything with that beautiful bronzing color. Now, in case you're wondering why I've gotten on this black and bronze kick, you can blame it on Sharon over at Cozy Junk Studio. I absolutely love to watch her channel. She's a fairly new channel, so please go check her out and show her some love and let her know that I sent you her way. I like to watch her style of crafting, and she's Southern, and she's a nurse, so we kind of got a lot in common, and I just love to watch her channel. But last week, she had some statues that she painted with like a brown-black color, and then she went over them with the bronze. She used like a metallic chocolate brown color on them too, and I mean, they just turned out beautiful. And then she used like a blue-green DIY paint that created that color patina like um, if you can remember when i first had that scale statue it had that blue green patina at its feet well she was able to recreate that with paints and products and it looked really good and i honestly do not mind shouting a sister out and lifting them up because you know what there's a lot of people on this platform that are the exact opposite that act like you're taking, you know, food out of their mouth if you say something good about them and, and just a lot of jealousy and stuff. And that ain't me. I'm not that. And I don't want to be. So I would love for y'all to go check her out. Now here is just a little mold. It's a piece from uh, the new mold that Lori sent me. And I'm going to destroy the word. But it's faux I think boy is how you pronounce it, B-O-I-S. And it looks to me like it's twigs. Like, and you can do it with, it would be great for like a border, like to frame stuff out. Well, I made this mold up and it's the thicker of the two that's on the mold. I painted it with layered chocolate, which you saw me do that a second ago. That's DIY paint. And then I did that same green and bronze patina. So I hope you guys like this, and if you didn't, remember to send all your angry comments to Sharon over at Cozy Junk Studio. <laughs>
and the creek don't rise. Hey, if you're watching me on your cell phone or an iPad, did you know that you could just click on my face and it will subscribe you to my channel? It sure will. And if you like this type of video, I have one right here that's very similar. Just click on it and it'll take you there when this one's finished. God bless you and your